Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. As we do with every car, we are doing a 70 mile per hour highway range test from 100% to zero on this beautiful Taycan 4S. This Taycan 4S is brand new. It has less than a thousand miles on it, so the battery is freshy fresh, so we can extract as much energy as possible out of it. What we're doing now is we're charging it up to 100% on an Electrify America DC fast charger. And what that will do is it's gonna heat up the car, it's gonna get everything nice and toasty so we can cruise at 70. Now, this car is at 98% state of charge. It's still doing 19 kilowatt, which is pretty good. So once it completes at 100%, we're gonna get everything set up in our normal driving range. We're gonna lower the car all the way, put it in eco mode, run air conditioning at uh, a general comfortable temperature, let's say 72 to 74 degrees on auto, as we do with every car. Tire pressures have been set to manufacture suggested pressures. And this is the one interesting thing about this Taycan the wheels. These are the largest wheels you can option. It's actually a $5,000 option. They're 21 inch wheels. They're 300 section tires in the rear, really wide things. So it's gonna be interesting to see what the 4S can do with the big wheels. And then in the future, we'll be testing another Taycan on the little baby wheels, the aero wheels, and we'll see how big of an impact it has. So for now, let's let it complete up to 100%. We'll get all of our settings correct in the car and we'll go out on 70 miles an hour in a loop style test and end up here dead. Okay, we have just completed charging at 100% state of charge and uh, we have the car set up. So we're gonna run range mode, which lowers the suspension all the way. We're gonna run air conditioning normally, like I said. How far will it go? I'm not sure. It's rated for 203 miles EPA. Indicated though, it's already suggesting 254 miles. I'm not sure how the car was driven up to this point but we will probably see more than EPA range, which, which will be pretty exciting. But by how much, there's only one way to find out. Let's go. So I've selected Eco instead of Eco Pro on air conditioning, and that's just because in Eco Pro, I don't actually think it runs the temperature. So 74 is reasonable. It's 75 degrees Fahrenheit outside. We are just about to head out of here, and uh, let's go now, now that I got it all set properly. The highway's right over here. We're gonna jump on, set it at 70, and uh, do a loop style test as we always do. So, time to go. This will be pretty cool. As we do with every car, as soon as we merge onto the highway, I check our GPS rated speed and 71 miles per hour is 70 GPS. So this car is a little optimistic by one mile per hour at 70, totally fine. We're gonna run this test at an indicated 71. And once we get past this section, there'll be no cars. We won't have any aero advantage. We don't wanna follow trucks. We don't wanna follow cars. We just wanna run on flat ground all by ourselves. Now there is an option that this car does not have and that's called Inno Drive. And Porsche Inno Drive is its lane centering adaptive cruise control driver assistance systems. So this car has adaptive cruise control, which is great. It has lane departure warning, but it does not have active lane centering. So I'm having to keep the car in the lane, which is no problem. If, you, if there's any car you wanna drive, it's the Taycan. And um, yeah, 71 miles per hour, we're pegged. And let's see how it does. I'm gonna tell you some facts about Taycan, some things that will help it in this particular test. And of course, we'll have a full review and other things coming on Taycan. So this is purely about the range. We're not talking build quality, driving dynamics, other things that make this car so special. And I think one of the best electric cars in the world, uh, at least to drive. Now, Taycan is one of the first production EVs, at least mass production, to use an 800 volt system architecture. I believe it's like 790 or something like this when it's full charged. And what that means is uh, purely just the battery pack voltage is higher. It allows for uh, faster charging at lower current rates because, uh, of course, volts times amps equals current. So if you have an 800 volt system versus a 400 volt system, you can charge it with the same current twice as fast. 
you also have uh, what's pretty cool is the benefit of smaller cabling and wires so it leads to lighter weight but this is no lightweight vehicle at all this is a heavy car um, and those are really the two interesting things about Taycan battery per se. It also has really good motor technology, two-speed transmission in the rear. Uh, when we go into range mode, the car is mostly primarily front-wheel drive, uh, so it's using that more efficient front motor. And um, yeah, so far we're getting almost three miles per kilowatt hour, which is not bad, really not bad at all. And uh, considering the weight and size and performance of this car and the 21 inch wheels, that's the big kicker here. This one has the big, big wheels. So yeah, 252 miles still projected on our range. We're very early on. We've only driven 8.5 miles. I am excited to see how far it goes. I'm not sure, but I know it's gonna be over 200 miles. It has to be. With a battery pack that's 93.4 kilowatt hour at three miles per kilowatt hour, oh yeah, we are way over 200 miles of range. Again, 93.4 isn't usable. It's a little less than that, but still a significant amount. Also have no wind so this is about as good as it's gonna get for a Taycan 4s with 21 inch wheels right now we have done 37 miles 37.1 miles into the test and we have 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour which is pretty good efficiency way more than I was expecting actually and the car is still predicting 230 miles of range and let's just take a look at our battery percentage we're at 88 percent and it's still pre predicting way more than EPA rated, and we've already used 12% of the battery. Man, this car is gonna go pretty far. We are just reaching our turnaround point. We're at 83%, so we are gonna be doing this loop quite a few times. And look at this, we're at 83% and we've done 54 miles. This thing's on track to do almost 300 miles of range. Of course, we'll see when we go back, uh, you know, it can always be a little bit more efficient heading this way than going back. That's why we do the loop style tests. So we're just gonna U-turn it and head back up the highway and keep this up. So far driving the Taycan is amazing. Even without Inno Drive, this car tracks so straight. It's set up so well from the factory that you almost just don't need it on a flat straight road. Pretty amazing now gently accelerating back up to 70 miles per hour. The thing is, if you accelerate hard, you end up uh, burning off a little bit of heat in the electronics. So we're gonna set the cruise control at 71. There we go. And we're back to go in the other direction. I cannot believe how well this car is doing compared to its EPA range. We all knew Taycans would do better, but we have done 54.8 miles and the car is still projecting 215 miles of range which is more than EPA rates this car in a full charge. Now what EPA does is they probably rate the car and of course they're mixed driving, but also in the key up setting, when you turn on the car, the car starts in normal. One of the benefits of range mode is lowering the car all the way down and using just the front motor. And by using the front motor, you have so much uh, less internal resistance. You're not running the gearbox as hard. I guess there's no way to really decouple it. So how true is that? I'm not really sure, uh, but I will say, it's performing a lot better than the EPA suggests. And that's such a bummer for Porsche because I feel like Taycan gets a bad rap for not having range, even though it has incredible highway range. And based off of this, a lot more than many Model 3s and Model S's. Loving it. We are almost 100 miles into our range test and something really weird happened. Look at the consumption, 0.6 miles per kilowatt hour. That's obviously not the case. We're getting over three miles per kilowatt hour, but somewhere around 60 miles into our trip, that just reset, went to zero, and it's been clicking up 0.1 miles ever since. Weird software bug, not sure what that's all about. Uh, so we've done almost 100 miles. Let's take a look to see how much um, battery percentage we have left, 67%. This thing is gonna do 300 miles, or very close to it, uh, based off of this data. So. Let's continue on, but we're getting close to see if this thing will do 300. That would be insane if we could get 300 out of it. We have just hit 50%. We've been driving for more than two hours, and uh, now it's time for me to show you how far we've gone. We might, we might hit 300 miles. I don't think we will, but we'll get pretty close. Let me show you how far we've gone. 
So we have just ticked over to 50% state of charge. Let me go up to show you our trip calculation for the consumption still wrong, but we've gone 144 miles, 145 miles, which would indicate a ton more range than that, of course. So if we extrapolate off of that number, we basically would see 190 miles, near as makes no difference. Can we squeeze an extra 10 miles out? I'd love to see 300, but of course, we don't know and there's no way this is the cool thing nothing i can do to influence the results we're just pegged at 71 percent or sorry 71 miles an hour and we'll see what the car turns out to yield but 50 percent indicated at 190 or sorry 290 miles would be double what we're at so that's pretty good range i have been driving for so long three hours wow this is going on we just passed 200 miles we're at 200.9 the car is predicting 76 miles left on the gasometer the gum it's a rate it's a range calculation based off of our driving history it's not a rated range calculation like tesla uses so it's predicting its future miles so 76 miles predicted based off of our previous driving history uh 201.3 miles driven and we have 29 percent battery left Oh my goodness, <laughs> we're not going to see 300 miles, but we are going to see somewhere in that 270, 280 range. That's still big range for this Taycan. Keep in mind a couple things that do not help with this range. It has the heavier, uh, uh, you know, seats, air conditioning seats, got some options on it, but also the DC to DC booster is upgraded from 50 to 150 kilowatt on 400 volt chargers. I imagine that weighs more. It also doesn't have the thermally and noise insulated glass. So it's a sunny day. It's 81 degrees out. The air conditioning is having to work a little bit harder than it would if the windows were tinted. And that does probably play a little bit of a role. Not much, but these are all things that go into a range test. Uh, conditions again, are still good and our consumption gauge is still bad it is still inaccurate uh, 0.8 miles per kilowatt hour we would have been so out of range by now if that was true anyway uh, off we go for some more driving now we are coming into what I consider to be the hardest part of these range tests is we want to end up back at the charger with as low of state of charge as possible without running out and so what I've done is I've programmed in the Electrify America station at Sheets that we always start our range test at, of course, recently, and it's predicting an 8% arrival. Now, I don't know how far up the next exit is, but I'm gonna risk it and I'm gonna go. And now if that 8% says minus one, then we'll be in trouble. Uh, but I think we should be able to be good. These exits are spaced a few miles apart. And then what we can do is we'll take that exit and then up closer to the charger, the exits are in closer proximity. So I can always drive past the charger and then pick the correct exit to get back there with almost no range. Then of course, when we pull off the highway, we are going to drive around on back roads uh, at maybe 55, 60 miles per hour as we totally drain the car to completely dead. It's how we run every range test. But of course, I'll tell you what the mileage is that we pull off the highway with. And we are choosing this exit. The car thinks we won't be able to make it back without charging, although it is showing a 6% arrival. So we're gonna take this exit, get back closer to the charger, and then determine which will be our final loop. But we are finally nearing the end of this test. Man, this car just kept going and going and going. As we are accelerating up gingerly, we don't want much heat loss, back up to 70 miles per hour. So 71 miles per hour was like 70.8 GPS. So what I've been doing for just the last few miles, uh, I'd say the last 30%, is I've been running the car at 70 miles per hour just to get it back to an average of exactly 70. You know, plus or minus, close enough. And so you can see our destination is right at the edge of the rim there. And uh, we'll probably have to go up one exit or two, and that should be it. But I think we picked the correct turnaround. And we just had a notification, please monitor range. And so I guess I clear that by clicking OK. Thank you very much, Porsche. We have just crossed 1,000 miles on the Taycan 4S. This was a fresh, fresh car. And uh, it was fun letting it hit its first milestone with 
a range test for inside EVs. How about that? All right, we are still continuing. Our projected arrival is now up to 7%. We've gone 240 miles with 38 still projected. Uh, so like I said, we'll probably end up in that 270, 280 range. We're gonna push it a few exits past the charger and then head back. It's getting pretty close and man, I am just blown away by the efficiency that we've seen so far, especially with these wheels. We are now at 10% state of charge. The car is predicting 27 miles remaining. So that puts us, you know, again, confirms that 270 mile prediction. We've driven uh, 252.8 miles. Uh, I reached out to some Tycon experts. So did my friend Brandon and we asked, you know, what is the ramp down? I have never run a Tycon down to zero before. So is there a usable buffer? Are we gonna see a power limit? And that's how we'll know it's out because a lot of times you can't just go off miles remaining. However, just like the Audi e-tron, the Porsche Taycan will pretty much shut off right when you get to zero, so they say. We have a 1% predicted arrival, eight miles projected left, and we've done 271.1 miles. So will we see 280? I don't know, but we'll probably at least see 279. Um, we're about four miles left on the highway, and then I'm gonna burn off the remaining four miles on the back roads, which should probably be a little bit better efficiency, so we'll probably just touch 280 is my guess. Now, I learned a little bit more as well about the Tycon ramp down. It's very similar to e-tron. So when it hits zero, it pretty much gives you a power limit, shuts off, and it won't let you move, and it basically dies. Then you just turn the car off, let pack voltage creep up just for a second. Same thing that I did with the e-tron, and then it will kick back on and give you just a burst of power to park the car somewhere safe. It doesn't last very long. So we're going to try not to hit that buffer, uh, but we are going to get it all the way down until it it says zero miles and zero is truly zero. That's when Porsche shuts off the car from being used. So we run it down all the way. We get every last drop of juice on these range tests and uh, we we'll only have a few more minutes left to go here. This has been four hours and eight minutes in the making, our longest range test to date and so far our longest distance that we have done. And here we go, taking the exit. Let's take a look at how many miles we have used. Uh, so this would be, come on, get away all these notifications, 274.7 miles at 70 miles per hour. We are pulling off the highway with, let's see how much battery percentage, 2% remaining, and we're gonna burn the rest off here on the back roads. This is so impressive, I can't even begin to tell you how impressed I am with the range of this 4S, it's crazy. I think everyone is excited to see how far this goes on a charge. We have like 10 people here, but I'm just gonna burn it off on these back roads, continue to do the loop, and we're gonna make sure we pull in completely dead. I was able to do one more loop, and we're just finishing up. We're at 0% state of charge. We have to accelerate because there was a car, but I guess they've turned. And uh, yeah, that was pretty amazing. I can definitely feel it. It just died. That's floored, and it's completely dead. Oh no, come on, Honda. Come on, Honda. Oh no. Oh no, oh no. Come on. It, it has no power. I'm dead here. All right, I have to shut it off. Park. Power. Okay. Power off. Come on, turn off, Porsche. There we go. And now we're going to turn it on. Now we're on. In drive, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go, oh yes. Okay, we he did it, it's restarted. I had to flash that guy because we cut in front of him. And here we go, pulling in at the 350 kilowatt. And we have finished up our test. We have pulled in, the car died on the street. You t I turned it off, turned it back on, gave us a burst of power, died again pulling in here and uh, we've achieved 277.9 miles, cruising at a 70 mile per hour constant. Really good conditions, blowing past the EPA range of 203 miles. And look at all the people here to see the Taycan get here at 0%. <laughs> Thank you.